Hello guys, so here we are um, in a part three, sort of, of hand stripping a Gordon or a, any setter. So part one was the head, part two uh, showed you the front leg and the elbows and now we're going to basically finish um, the rest of him. Um, he's not fully groomed, we still got loads of scissoring and tidy up to do. But first we're gonna strip all this fuzz and fluff. Um, now here on the sides, on the ribs, um, are a lot of soft dead fuzzies. Um, and then up the spine and shoulders, we have certain thighs, we've got some better hair, but because he's shedding uh, like crazy, uh, which means there's a lot to remove, so, if the coat is coming out, no matter what it looks like, if it's coming out in handfuls, uh, then um, it's time to give it a good strip all over. So we've done the elbow. Uh, he's been brushed through, so I don't have to worry about catching anything if I'm raking. Um, now, uh, before we get to the body, uh, we're gonna have a look at his thighs here. Um, all of this. Uh, he's going to have a major trim as well because his feathers are just uh, really pathetic. So I'm not going to keep a lot of them. Um, and um, I'm also going to take out this side of his thigh because it's, look, I mean, you stand it up and he stays up. Uh, so it's really dead, horrible hair. Um, we're going to keep what grows on the inside of his legs, uh, but not this on the outside. And some pet dogs, um, if you want to have as little feathers as possible uh, for pets, you can go ahead and remove the outer thigh and only leave what grows on the inner leg to sort of give you that skirt without too much excess. This also tangles really badly because it's so soft and fuzzy. So what I'm going to use here, it's the Andes Normal Tooth Rake to get the most of the hair out. This is why this is not a brush and don't run these free feathers if you want to save them because this will actually pluck all of your feathers out. Uh, so we can remove um, feathers, some of it, some dead coat on the top like sort of here, which we'll get to that later. But this, I want to remove all of this on the outside of his second thigh. And for that, for a nice natural look, rather than scissoring it off, I'm going to use this and see how quick and easy that will come out. So we're just going to keep running that out. Because the hair is so long, this tool works better than the fine tooth one. And we're just going to keep running it on the outside. Um, I can hold some of his inner leggings, trousers in my hand and we go all the way down, take all of this out. Look, see, and we're starting to see the tan markings, which I really love to see the tan markings um, as much as possible on the Gordons. So removing this, because he never really grows proper nice thick hair here anyway, and he's missing the bits there, so I can't kind of tidy up nicely. So it's better just to keep the inner. Once we start removing, you'll see what I mean. We can go down here, the, this, this little bit, we can try to pull it that way. See if grip some, we will have to touch up with. Uh... I've done this on him before. Um, it does grow back, but never, never thick and proper. And I want to remove all the black hair until I get to the tan markings which are growing from the edge of his knee and on the inside of his thigh. See, and we've got a few little hairs left there. The black ones. And look, and that looks uh, a lot more natural now, Stanio. And now we'll tidy up. You see, we've got the feathers on the inside. So, like the springers, all of these ugly bits that stick out, we'll pluck that. It's uh, 
really not nice here. I don't want it there. I'll, I'll, I want to keep his back skirts. So we're going to fold those in nicely and we should see a nice thigh edge and then like some of these they're very brown in the sun and ugly and dead and fuzzy and soft and they tangle so i don't want it there rather to have less coat but whatever only keeping the hair that's nice texture nice quality then keeping everything and then he kind of looks like a whack wet rat here we go that can come out don't need that don't want that he goes out with my husband he's uh it's very muddy this time of the year in england um uh, well mostly very muddy in england most of the year but here we go except a few nice summers take that out and that's all ugly I don't want this that can come out this can come out and we've got all the inner skirts on these legs see it's all kind of in there but he hasn't got much of it so he's gonna have a major trim anyway we're gonna shorten them a bit um, the skirt from inside uh, up towards this tail we come in here but we'll get to the rest of the thigh later Um, this clean thigh on a dog like him that doesn't grow thick hair here um, it's um, if you look at um, Irish or English setters they don't have a thick chunk hair there so I'm sort of working to the look um, of uh, what an Irish would look like or a spring spaniel they also don't grow these thick bits um, for pets so I just want to keep some feathers so they look like they breed rather than cutting it all off like sometimes pet owners want. You know, um, they can't maintain the coat, so, uh, but they want them to look like setters, but they don't want to have the feathers shaved off. So this is sort of a way of keeping some I would say um, the important ones, so that they look have they set her outline with some featherings, but without the excess of the hair, which is uh, uh, a bit too difficult for owners to maintain. I know you you will sit in a minute, not yet. Stay, Neo. We just uh, and there we cleaned his thigh um, and now we're going to tidy up his oh, really? come on Bubba now we are working here on the back of his uh, bottom a bit and you see this hair isn't really dead or brown or anything but it's coming out um, like I said, he's shedding badly, so let's remove it because it's going to come out anyway. And by removing it, I'm letting the new coat allowing it to start growing until the old old hair comes out. New hair can't regrow, so even though it's not brown, it's not fuzzy. It is laying flat, but still it's coming out in bulk and chunks. So we'll help it along to come out. And then we get a nice new coat growing in. Stay. Stay. 
stay up. And that's how we'll go. So that's one uh, part. And then we'll just keep tidying up the thigh. It's becoming a bit too thick. So if we've got far too much going, let's see if we can take anything out with the um, this rake. little bit base of the tail and then the thigh line we've still got chunks coming out see so I thought it's a bit too much with fingers so let's rake again and we rake until the hair comes out with the rake and then we finish off the rest with fingers and the tongue's still coming And then once the rake is not taking anything, then we move to other areas. We'll have a look here. This also, look, this is all horrible hair, so that's going to come out. We can rake this down because... I basically only want to keep the feathers that are grown from the bottom of his rib cage, rib cage and not much that's here growing on the sides because it's horrible, it's dead, it's brown, it needs to go. There's nothing I can do with it to make it look nice. So we're just going to run it down. Now you have to make sure you've got no tangles there if you are raking because you will catch it. A tangle and they might not like that um, he's been brushed through so I know and then um, occasionally brush out the odd bits that might stay in the coat because then if you leave the loose hair in the coat it will cause some serious matting Don't want none of that brown junk. Oh, look, that's all dead horrible. Look how horrible that hair is. Oh, not nice. Off it goes. Don't know how much we're going to scissor his feathers shorter as well. Um, oh, tons coming out really easy. We don't want that junk. coming out but I don't want it there it's got to go then we can move a little bit uh, sit near sit we have to then finish that up with the rest of his body by hand but while we've got the rake we can then also rake into the fall chest a little bit because some of that will come out neck side of the neck make sure you haven't got tangles behind the ear if you're coming up here no, loads coming out no wonder you've been shedding so much my boy new shiny coat under there can you see it once we've removed uh, 
when I finish, I will show you all his hair that we've uh, removed and dealt with. Once I sweep it up and you'll see just how much there was that was ready to come out and needed to come out. And also here on the side, a full chest, I'd like to see the tan mark in there if you can. Uh, a little bit down the shoulders. Now the rake kind of stopped, see, taking much out. So now it's a good time to move to uh, hand stripping. Stand up, Baba. Good boy. Right, and now we finish up with uh, um, my favourite tool, show tech, uh, and the rubber finger. And uh, we'll just see. This is all nice, smooth lane code, but it's coming out in. It's just coming out so easy. So whatever comes out, we go and get it out. Stretch that he's got lots of loose skin on the neck. Is that nice? You got itchy spot there. <laughs> Good boy. And we'll just take him because this is all loose hair that's just uh, shedding all over the house. Go that way, Bubs. And we'll just, just take in everything that's coming because this really wants to come out. All of it. His thighs. Oh, I know, Baba. But you've been asleep for the past hour, so you can stand a little bit now. To so probably fully stripper setter hand strip, I, it takes me about two hours when they really overgrown, like near and need a full body strip all over and uh, I can't physically do any more than two hours because uh, my hands will start hurting at that point, they go a bit numb and uh, cramp up and so it's good to split the work into sections over a few days, two, three days and have a little rest. And there's just there's tons there. Just stand rubber. Alright, let, let him sit for a minute and we go down down his body. But you can see that removing the bed fuzzies and ugly hairs, you've got some nice shiny coat underneath the shoulders. Um, oh, da, 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 what are you being silly for? Are we not laying down? No, oh, not yet. For those that may be missed on the videos before, he's eight years old. Um, his coat is uh, not always the best. We are struggling to grow his feather, tried all sorts of different foods, and sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. Uh, I mean, his jacket always been nice and easy, but the feathers we're struggling with. Um, he's also fully neutered now for three years and then another two and a half years before his castration he was chemically neutered 
So his coat's not changed one bit, not at all. Everything's exactly the same as it was. I strip him maybe three, four times a year, really not, not even that often. Um, it's possible. I know there's a lot of talk about do not neuter them and that you ruin your coat. I've seen far too many ruined coats, even on dogs that are not neutered. Uh, you can deal with neutered coat. It just might be more coat, uh, more work. Um, clipping is definitely what ruins the coat. Um, I've done a few neutered animal. Ouch! Stabbed myself with a pin under the fingernail. Here we go. Mind you, he's not bathed. He's not dirty, but he's not freshly bathed. Um, and he's been getting wet on the walks. So he's sort of air dried his coat. That's why it's a little bit um, wavy. If I blow dried him, obviously he'd, uh, he'd be nice and smooth and sleek. Then we ain't got much to go, Stumps. And you see, I keep keep moving all over the body. I'm not working too much in one area. We'll, we keep moving all sorts. But you can see a nice shiny coat is appearing under removing that dead, dead junk, as I call it with a junk, he's an expert of growing junk. A new stump egg. We call him Stumps. His name is Neo, but in case you wonder why I call him Stumps. So we do call him Stumps because when he was a, he stomps his feet around the house when he walks like a little tantrum child until he gets what he wants. So that's why we call him Stumps. That's all horrible, brown dead junk. If you want to see the brown hair really, really well, because uh, in some light you might not see it, you don't know what to remove, um, go out into the sunshine, put them, in, face them into the sun, your coat that you want to work on, and you'll see straight away what's brown. Um, if you want to remove everything brown, do it with a nice sun shining on your coat and then you'll be able to see exactly what you want to remove. And got lots of brown there. He's sort of going to get like a, I'd say a pet trim if you like, because uh, he's feather, he hasn't got great feathers. There's no point keeping ugly hair. It just causes hassle. Plus, once it's dead like that, it's going to come out eventually anyway. So, might as well take it out now. I'm trying him on different food again, so we'll see what we'll grow, because he does grow slightly different coat on different food, so I'm yet to find one that grows him a nice coat. The one that did work quite well, um, especially for his tail, he seemed to have a quite nice thicker tail on it. Um, I can't get it anymore, so 
um, where you're just trying, basically trying um, brands made in Europe rather than British made foods or these sort of worldwide foods like Royal Canning. I've not never had him on Royal Canning or Hills or none of that really. And the ingredients seem to put me off trying food like that. So he hasn't got a sensitive tummy so we're quite lucky that we can try different foods and because uh, it does make a difference in their coats the food so if you're not happy with the coat try to change food if you can and see leave it for a few months three to six months at least possibly maybe even a year and um, see if your coat's, coat grows differently but you can already see the change from the dead fuzzies um, stripping the junk and it's looking a lot better and it's still coming out Perhaps it's a seasonal thing because we've got spring coming here uh, already. Perhaps that's why all this is coming out like crazy. I have noticed the other dogs that are groomed, double coats mainly, started shedding off their winter coat. So perhaps this is the seasonal coat change spring and summer change the winter summer coats who knows there we go good boy almost there we go see so uh, he went quite quickly half hour on almost the whole side forward to a lot less food for him as well so there you go that's how we strip a coat quickly and then we can do a fine tuning when we scissor off his feathers which um, I might do in the next part to tidy up his feathers so thank you guys for watching I hope you found this helpful sit near sit you can sit swallow too much hair when we pluck in so thank you very much for watching and um i'll be back with some uh, other videos perhaps scissoring off his feathers into more of a pet trim bye for now